What are some things you do to get it done in your business, in your life? Today, we're launching this book, Get Shit Done, and we are excited to be interviewing the authors of this book. And we have one author here with us today, Laura Diaz, um, has written a chapter in this book. And um, it's, it's all about getting stuff done. Laura, welcome. And thank you for, for sharing your, um, your, your strategies, your tips inside this book. So why don't you just, um, we'll start by having you introduce yourself, tell, um, tell everybody, you know, who you are and what you do. Hi, Sally. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I'm Laura Diaz and I'm a board certified coach. And basically I'm a life coach that works primarily with women that want to go beyond where they are right now and, and maximize their potential and see what else is there for themselves. Right now, my focus has been working with women uh, 55 and beyond and looking at beyond retirement. What else can I do in, in building myself as a person? And so I'm excited about being here and also submitting some chapters with action takers. Yeah. So what made you decide that you wanted to write a chapter in this book? Well, when I, when I saw the title, you know, it just reminded me about things have to get done, you know, you know, before we accomplish anything, you know, we lag, we procrastinate and we allow certain behaviors to self-sabotage us in moving forward. But we know better that we need to get things done. And so when I remember what happened to me, what escalated my success as an entrepreneur, as a manager, as a business person, was getting some things done prior to that to allow my my own confidence, my own self-esteem to say, I can do it, where I could believe in myself. But it took some effort on my side and took much support from mentors and other people that were along the side with me and letting me know I can do it. So I just want to share a chapter and letting people that the struggle of success and getting things done can be a struggle. But if you reach out with other people and know that you have the potential, you can maximize your effort and your potential and just move forward. It's not, I'm not saying it's easy, but if you're committed to a change and getting things done, especially if you know you're going someplace, you know you're escalating to a success, could be work, could be uh, a business that you're creating. It could be a relationship or money that you're trying to make. Whatever it is, there's always something behind the scenes that we really need to polish. Like for me in this chapter, I needed to polish my self-confidence, my self-esteem, and to make, make myself feel more in a place that I could express that. The biggest fear in this chapter that I'm talking about is public speaking. I was terrified. I was terrified since, you know, since, since young to speak in front of groups. But you know what? That was the milestone. That was the breaking point for me to say, I'm coming after you. I'm not going to allow that fear to just hold me back. Because if I allow that fear to hold me back, I would not be where I am right now. I would not have accomplished some successes that I did, some promotions that I eventually went forth if I had not chosen to get that done in a final way to get over my fear, final way for me to be trained in public speaking and feel comfortable speaking to other people and groups. Yeah, so, so here's the, the title of your chapter is how I went beyond my fears and succeeded. So what may, what's, what's that title all about? That title is telling me and it's telling the reader that all of us have fears but in order for us to succeed at anything we need to go beyond those fears because fear is a is, is feedback to us telling us you're not there yet there's something else to be done there's something else to be learned there's another there's more information that you need to go beyond that fear and once we find what that is once we realize what that is, then we can go beyond our fear. And what happens when we go beyond our fear, our self-confidence goes up and it can overcome that fear because there's a part of us 
that wants us to succeed. There's a part of us, there's a wise part of us that wants us to go move forward and be a contribution to this world. So that part of us is going to help us succeed, especially if we're committed to wanting to succeed. But friend is always, fear is always going to be there next to us. So we have to be friended and realize that it's going to be there, but we need to find a way to go beyond it and not make it the big thing that's going to hold us back. So when we look at fear, look at fear as, as a message to you that says, you're not there yet. Doesn't mean you can't be. It just said you're not there yet. And it's our responsibility to move forward. Yeah, I find I find that really interesting. And one of the things that you you mentioned was having that mentor. Um, and, you know, that's something that, you know, as I've been on this journey for the last three years, um, I've really embraced in it. And, and the whole rest of my life, I, I, you know, having a coach or a mentor wasn't something that was even in my in my view, you know, I worked and uh, that wasn't something that, you know, I, I even thought about. And now that I'm in this space and, um, you know, doing the things that I'm doing, I find that, you know, I need that, that mentor, I need those coaches to help me get through. So, you know, how, how big of an impact is that in, you know, having those mentors in moving beyond those fears and, um, in helping you to succeed? You know, to me, it was huge. And I've seen that happen with a lot of my colleagues and clients that I've worked with. It is huge. When you give support, when, when I've received support from somebody who has the knowledge, who has the skill, I can start feeling a sense of support, a sense of confidence that I'm being supported because I think that all of us are scared in moving forward. And then, and, and also our doubt seems to escalate us into really thinking, oh, can I do that? Did I deserve this? I don't know if I can do this. But when we have a mentor who's skilled and knowledgeable and they push us gently, yes, you can do it. We start believing, we borrow their, their belief in, in, in us moving forward. And as we move forward and notice little successes turn into bigger successes, then we start believing in ourselves, I can do it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And that's when the moment happens and you say, I'm doing it and I feel yeah. great. You know, there's a moment like, aha, I'm doing it. Yeah, and, and it's breaking through those self-doubts, right? It's breaking through those, uh, the, 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 um, the talks that we have um, within, our, with our own, within our own brain. You know, oh, absolutely. Changing, <laughs> changing our, our our stinking thinking. And, and, you know, that we don't really know how much that holds us back until we we have that coach, we have that mentor, we start um, doing things and that um, that mindset starts kicking in. So um, talk a little bit about, you know, your your chapter in this and what do you, you know, what are some of the, the tips that you give, and without giving too much away, some of the tips that you give to help people get over that fear? Well, some of the things that I talk in the chapter is I identify how did, how did I start become aware of this fear? And how was this fear holding me back as a person, as a woman, as a student, or as, as, as a career person? And noticing it and then realizing that I had goals, I had desires that I wanted to move forward. I want upward mobility in my career, but something was holding me back. And that was my own self-esteem and also inability to speak in front of groups and feeling scared. And I knew that if I wanted upward, mo upward mobility, I needed to feel at ease in speaking in front of groups or speaking with strangers. And so I knew that I needed to do something about this because there was a goal that I was reaching, aiming for. And so when I'm talking about this chapter, I'm talking to all those entrepreneurs, all those people that are striving for something beyond their fear. And what steps did I take? What tools did I use in accessing other resources, other mentors in helping me create more knowledge, create new skills, and by me engaging in 
a new new being a student of a certain knowledge and a certain skill that brought me into a place that I could say I'm going beyond that fear. I'm doing it. So I just want to share my story with many people that may be able to identify because I realize that public speaking is a number one, one of the number one fears with most people. And that can really hold us back, especially if we're entrepreneurs or people that want to move forward in our life. Exactly, exactly. So um, you do some coaching. How can people connect with you if they want to reach out to you? If people want to reach out to me, I would suggest, you know, they contact me at www.inharmonycoaching.com. And there's a contact page and, and they can submit a contact with their name and phone number. And I can contact them and set up a time that we can talk. But I would love, you know, to people, you know, to contact me if they can identify it and if my story resonates with what may be happening with you. Because we both, we as human beings have these voices that we listen to. We have the critic side of us and then we have the wise side, side of us. And, you know, at, at any moment we're listening to different voices and which one are you going to listen to the most? Hopefully it's the wise person, the wise part of you. So uh, I'm excited about this book and I'm excited about sharing this story with many people. <laughs> I love it. So what do you want the readers to take away from this book, from your story in this book? That if you make a choice to do something about something that really scares you and is going to, you know, get you beyond that fear, do it, do it. And at the same time, make sure that you have support because doing things alone uh, by yourself, it doesn't work. And I've seen this many times as a professional, as a coach, as a student, wanting to do be the solo person that I can do it, I can figure it out, doesn't work. Always look for support because if you have a goal, you have a dream that you want to accomplish, you can do it. Find the resources because you can do it. And you can go beyond that fear that's holding you back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being part of this book, for sharing your, your story inside of it. Um, I want to remind everyone to go to actiontakerspublishing.com slash GSD and get your copy today. While you're there, you'll be able to get some free gifts from some of the authors. So make sure you, you go there, order the book on Amazon and help us to become be a bestseller um, so, Laura, thank you for for um, for interviewing with us for today, for being part of this book, and um, we will uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Sally. My name's Monica Allen, and I am the host of the Stitch for Success podcast, but I'm also a an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for over 18 years. And when I initially heard Linda Sunshine speak about her book, um, her compilation book coming out called The Fearless Entrepreneurs, my curiosity peaked. However, I did not jump on board because I felt like I don't really have a story, but I was talking with my husband one day and I, I wasn't even really thinking about Linda's book, but I was just talking to him and he said, Monica, you have a story. You should really share your story more and tell people more about where you came from and how you've gotten here. And I thought, uh, it's not really that interesting. I've lived my life and it was a good life and there's no one wants to hear my story. But he said, no, no, you really have an inspirational story and you should share it. Well, well, Linda happened, Linda Sunshine happened to mention her book again in a clubhouse room. And I thought I should really reach out to her and, and say that I'm interested. And so I, I sent her a message on Instagram and she reached back out to me very quickly and said, well, let's have a conversation. And she told me about it and I debated for a few days on whether to jump on it or not because just because again not having a story not sure if that was the right way I should go but something in my gut told me to do it and I'm so glad I did 
because it has led to a new side of me. It has led to me telling my story and being proud of my story and knowing that there's someone out there. I don't know who, but someone out there that my story can and will touch. And Linda has been so professional throughout this process. I don't even know how she does it because I would send her an email to ask a question and literally she responded to me so quickly. And I'm on the East Coast, she's on the West Coast. So I'm not quite sure how she always did that, but she has answered every question I had, any request that I had, she um, would get back to me so quickly. And so it's just been a wonderful, wonderful process. I have enjoyed the interviews that she's booked for me throughout this process. And I'm so excited to be a best-selling author. That has, that's not something that I even dreamt of six months ago, but it's here and I'm very proud of it. And I just want to thank Linda Sunshine for being a part of my life and adding that accolade to my life.